Hello fellow sim racers. They say history is written by the victors, and thanks to the enduring success of Formula One Grand Prix racing, it's all too easy to view motorsports history through the lens of its most popular category. So it's convenient to consider motorsport as something that only really started to get going after the end of the Second World War. After all, the first race run under the new regulations for Formula A, later Formula One, took place in 1946, and it wasn't until 1950 that the World Championship for Drivers was formalised. And thus, when many of us think of classic motor racing, we think back only as far as the 1950s. But here's something to consider. The first recorded automobile races took place in 1867, 83 years before the commencement of the first Formula One World Championship race. 83! So, to casually disregard what amounts to about 55% of the history of motor racing is probably a bit of a mistake. Now, some of you are probably thinking, shut up Chris, I know all about the likes of Nuvolari, Caracciola and Hans Duck Senior, which is all very well and good, but can someone please let sim racing developers in on the secret? The lack of interest from developers in the pre-war period of motorsport almost certainly echoes a lack of interest from the wider public, and that's pretty understandable. The vast majority of sim racers weren't born before the war, and, well, neither were their parents. So such a product would be commercially imprudent. But thankfully, when it comes to mod content, profit isn't really all that much of a driving force. And that's why we as a community can enjoy tracks like this. Places claimed to be the home of British motorsport. Brooklands was the world's first permanent race circuit. Silverstone hosted the very first World Championship Grand Prix in 1950. But Donington Park has a good claim itself, being the first permanent road course in Great Britain. And despite my earlier cautionary comment about viewing motorsport through the lens of F1, it's worth remembering that Donington, alongside Brooklands, was the place for pre-war Grand Prix racing. And it's in this guise that the circuit's presented in the mod. 38 was a notable year for Donington. With Europe on the brink of war, the race very nearly didn't take place. But the delayed event went ahead with a field that would include the Auto Union and Mercedes cars, which were the dominant force of the time. The race was arguably Donington Park Zenith in its original configuration, and it's easy to see why this mod pays homage. So it's a great shame that there are no suitable Grand Prix cars of the era available, save for an unauthorized rip of a positively ancient R-Factor mod. And that's why I'm driving the anachronistic Maserati 250F in this video. The history lesson ends in 1939 with war breaking out in Europe and the park being requisitioned by the government for the war effort. It wasn't until the late 1970s that the circuit would again see regular motor racing and forge a reputation as an integral part of British motorsport. Those familiar with the circuit as it stands today will find the 1938 configuration eerily familiar. The lap starts in unfamiliar territory, with Redgate being a left-hander, before traversing Hollywood and the Craner Curves, which, save for a few trees, are pretty much as you find them today. The Hairpin, McLean's and Coppers are all there, though profiled differently. And the long run down to the Melbourne Hairpin is even longer, bumpier, and doesn't have a chicane in the middle. Interestingly, with the Hairpin located on the other side of the hill, the braking zone is downhill, which in period cars must have been, um, noteworthy. This is another one of those mods where atmosphere is the order of the day. Well-observed details help place the mod historically and contextually, and everything hangs together to form a wonderful sense of time and place. Jim Lloyd has obviously put a lot of work into creating what is as much a research project as a technical one. And by combining contemporary LiDAR data with on-the-ground research and period photographs, Jim has come up with something that looks and feels very believable in my opinion. All of the usual period hazards are present at Donington, lethal curbstones, ramp-like mounds at the track edge, and of course, buildings placed in what would otherwise be considered the racing line. There is runoff, but it's filled with people, trees, and parked cars, which I'm sure we can all agree are far more effective at slowing down an errant racing car than a bit of gravel could ever hope to be. 
I'm a bit late to the party with Donington 38, which has now been out for over a year. It's a mod that I receive frequent requests to make a video about, and until now I've not really got around to it. But Jim has just released the version 1.0 update, so I thought it was about time that I got off my backside and made this video. The reason it took me so long had nothing to do with the mod itself, which is excellent, but the lack of pre-war cars available to drive in Assetto Corsa. I consider myself a motorsport fan that enjoys sim racing, rather than the other way around. So I try where possible to match cars and circuits in a historically sensitive way in my videos. And not wanting to feature an unauthorised rip of a now pretty ancient R Factor mod left me with very few options. So I'm going to end this video with an appeal to the modding community. With so many excellent historical tracks now available for Assetto Corsa, it would be fantastic if we had some cars to match. Now, does anybody have any experience running a Kickstarter campaign? So, that's about all I have to say about this wonderful mod. If you're late to the party too, then I've included a link in the video description to its page on Race Department. As always, if you enjoy the mod, please consider leaving it a review on Race Department, and if you can afford to do so, donate the creator a few beer tokens. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you think the video will be helpful for others, then please consider sharing it. As always, thank you for donating your precious free time by watching. It is very much appreciated. So all that's left to say is goodbye, thank you for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.